All right, welcome back for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the video and article that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those little hidden treasures that are still tucked away in those cheap boxes, those dollar boxes, those discount bins, wherever you find your cheap comics. These are some things you might still be able to find based on some of the recent news, rumors, speculations, and, and what have you. Uh, hopefully you're still enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Please let me know in the comments like subscribe hit the alert button so you don't miss anything keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel as we're getting closer and closer to 2000 subscribers uh we are kicking around the idea that possibly as early as this weekend i might open up a membership tier on the channel i mean it's been available to me for a while now uh we're still working out the details of what we're going to offer as far as this membership goes but if you're interested uh please check it out on the channel because uh, we're going to try to come up with some fun stuff uh, to make it worthwhile uh, for members. So uh, keep an eye on that. As I said, we might open it up as early as this weekend. Uh, and if you want to know what books I have for you this week, considering it's San Diego Comic-Con, it has started today. Uh, we even had a live report last night on the tax show. If you wanted to see a little sneak preview of the floor at SDCC, Matt from Absolute Geek Podcast uh, gave us a little uh, peek while he was walking around. And make sure you go sub up to his channel as well. And uh, with that all said, if you want to see the books I got for you this week, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro, and I will be right back. All right, so let's get right into it and see what we got for you guys this week. Well, we're going to start off bouncing around. Got a little bit of Marvel, touch of DC, and a bunch of indie stuff as well. And we are going to start off with Marvel because there was an announcement that I saw today that we are going to be getting a new series focused on Joe Fixit, Mr. Fixit, that uh, Gray Hulk. Uh, enforcer style version of the Hulk uh, is going to get his own series. What will this be? I have no idea, but it is kind of interesting, right? 2023, the original writer P Peter David is going to be giving us something, and uh, he he's a good writer, so I'm looking forward to something at least interesting. Could be worthwhile. Probably going to be like a little bit of a mini, and uh, just see what kind of story they still want to tell around uh, Joe Fix It. So keep an eye out for that coming up in 2023. So while we do that, might as well look back on the books we can get related to this topic. Yes, we can talk about that first appearance of Joe Fixit. This heated up for a while there. It's cooled off a bit again. It's still well known. It's still well known and it's still usually pulled out and priced. So finding this in a cheap box or a dollar bin is going to be pretty tough. But still, Hulk 347, if you want to know, there is your first appearance of Joe Fixit here. And we can take a look, a little peek on the inside. You see just little teases, teases with him in his suit, talking about Mr. Fixit. And then, you know, later on in this issue, we, we do see him pop out in the Gray Hulk with his little fedora and his little pinstripe suit. Pretty fun, pretty fun stuff. But as I said, this is a pretty well-known book at this point. So you shouldn't be surprised that this thing still sells for around 15 to 20 bucks. Uh, Cause that's what recent sales are. have put this at. And uh, even asking prices are still in that kind of 20 to $30 range. So if you do find this, you did a good job. This is already a book that has a little bit of interest. It may gain a little steam as we get closer to this release. If there's a lot more interest around Joe fix it, but who knows now, Loosely related to this, another one you might want to keep an eye out for it while you're digging in those boxes is that before we got the Joe Fixit persona, there was the return of the Gray Hulk. And uh, looking at that first appearance might also be worth your time as well, because you can sometimes still sneak that one for kind of cheap because it's not as uh, in demand as, say, as specific as the Joe Fixit. Because just him turning gray wasn't as big a deal, I guess, as uh, this you know little uh, gangster type character. Uh, but for that return to the gray uh, Hulk, we got it right here, 324, and it's right there on the cover that it's going to happen. Granted, we'll, we'll give you a little snippet on the inside as well here, too, where you can see Doc Samson and all that, and we see the return of the gray Hulk. But it's right there on the cover, so you know what book it is. You can just easily identify it right here. And like I said, this one can still be snuck for cheap. Well, I mean, eight bucks, it could still sell for higher, like 25, but there's an occasional $8 sale. And there's a true believer version of this as well, uh, which you can also find for cheap because those were like a buck at one time, right? So keep an eye out for those too, uh, if you want, just for the read and just to have a copy if you want. And if you can't find this one, true believer might be the way for you to go. Uh, but again, 
asking prices on this is still in kind of that same range, 20 to 30 bucks uh, if you can find one. Not saying you're going to, but I figured, you know what, let's put both of these options out there in case you're digging in a box, in case you hit some hulks, you got some idea of what you might want to look for and pull out of there. I do like the McFarlane run where he had the Great Hulk because there were some really nice covers in that as well, but those are also pretty well picked clean uh, from the cheap, cheap boxes, and if you find them, absolutely buy them, but... Uh, they're most likely priced in a back issue bin, uh, asking for more than a dollar or two. So, uh, you know, if you find them, buy them. But otherwise, you know, you got to look to pay a little bit more for something like that. All right. Up next, we're going to go more to the indie side of things, because I mentioned this last night on the tax show while doing the news that, yes, HBO Max and the Cartoon Network have greenlit this uh, Ianu series child of wonder i don't know much about it I, I haven't read this i think it's like graphic novels uh but before there was a graphic novel there was a comic book i guess uh or the only comic book that i could find related to this was that halloween comic fest book and again i mentioned this yesterday on the tax show as part of the top 10 and 10 uh i might clip that out and show that uh, separately this weekend as well but this book has been selling well the last week or two uh, based on this green light news. This is not option news. This is made, making, producing, coming, uh, optioned. Who knows what's going to happen? It's not the same exact thing. This is something we are actually going to be getting. Uh, so keep that in mind. What does that mean? These prices will hold? I have no idea. But right now, this is like 30 bucks. Uh, that's what this thing is selling for. And you go online looking to buy one. That's kind of what they're asking. It's around 30 bucks. There's one, look, 45 bucks with a lot of other... Uh, Halloween Comic Fest from 2019, but just this one alone is the one that's really, I guess, the prize of this grouping, even though you can get that uh, Miles uh, reprint in there, in that in that lot. But uh, like I said, around 30 bucks for this thing is kind of what this is going for right now. So keep that in mind if you can find one. Uh, again, I'm not telling you go pay these prices. Just look for it because Halloween Comic Fest is not unlike a free comic book day book. So a lot of these were purchased very, very cheap by shops and given away at Halloween. So... These are the types of things that find their way into those cheap boxes because it's just overstocked. They're very small, very thin. Uh, again, they purchased for pennies by uh, comic shops. And if they didn't give away all of them or this wasn't one that was scooped up by collectors because they didn't know what this was or care, those extras just got shoved in the uh, dollar boxes usually. So that's why it's good to look for those free comic book day, those Halloween comic fest, those other free type books like that. So uh, just be mindful of it. All right, going back over to Marvel uh, for our one more Marvel for this week. I'm not going to overly uh, inundate you guys with Marvel news or anything. So just one more. Right now, we're looking at Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Quake is reportedly getting a new origin story rumored for her MCU debut. So it looks like they're not going to be using. They may use the actress, Chloe Bennett, but they may not use the story of her on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV show, because uh, they seem to be distancing themselves from that universe. It's just like a little side universe, uh, despite the fact that I thought it wasn't bad. There, there's a lot of good in that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. I also liked the Peggy Carter show when it was on. Uh, were they perfect? No. But there was a lot to like in them. So, uh, But I get it. They want to distance themselves. They can make that like a variant, another universe, another version. Fine. I'm not going to argue. But I will not be opposed to seeing more Chloe Bennett in the uh, MCU. So if she does come back, uh, I would welcome it. Now, with that, her first appearance, uh, as you probably well know by now, is Secret War number two. Uh, this book is again another one that's been well known for years, specced on for years. It's had its highs, it's had its lows, it's been up, it's been down. And you might even say now is another one of those down times because not a lot of talk about Quake these days. She doesn't have a big profile in the comic books. She doesn't have a big profile on television, movies, or anything. So everything's just based kind of on rumor right now. So with that, here's a little interior shot of her uh, first appearance there. Youngest, uh, young member there introduced to this crew of uh, secret Avengers before there were secret Avengers uh, to do this mission. And uh, with that, this book, again, you could still find it selling uh, for a decent amount, 20 to 40 bucks over the last couple of sales uh, for raw copies with asking prices in that 25 to 30 dollar range. I, I found this thing for cheap quite a few times and would grab it every time I could. Uh, it does have that thick cardstock cover, so it can hold up well. But if it does get spine ticks, you're not pressing those out. Those aren't going anywhere because uh, that thick cardstock cover with that foil on it is uh, pretty unforgiving, especially considering it is black. So 
maybe you can still find this in a cheap box. But again, chances are slim that you will. So what else can we look at for her character that might be interesting to you guys uh, to grab out of the cheap boxes? And something that I like uh, for her is that uh, 50th anniversary special they had. I think Mockingbird got one. I think even the Cavalry. They did it basically for the TV show type characters. Uh, the 50th anniversary um uh, this was a Quake version. It was a one-shot. Uh, this is the Chris Christian Ward cover. This is the cover B, uh, which is nice. But the real one I like is the David Nakayama. Yes, I'm a David Nakayama fan, so that's why I like this book. And uh, I like this cover. So DNA there in uh, 2015. Pretty cool cover. And this this thing, again, it's not worth a whole heck of a lot. But you still might be able to find this tucked away in those uh, discount boxes, those overstock boxes, those, again, those dollar bins. Because it wasn't that popular of a book. It is a cool cover, but... Again, Quake doesn't have that many fans that were really uh, knocking down the door for this one. That said, a copy did sell on a best offer of $25. Granted, they didn't get $25. I didn't bother to look what it was, but you can see the other issue sells for like 3 bucks online right now. So I would say anywhere 3 to 10 is what this thing's kind of moving for uh, on the uh, Ebays these days. Uh, and the asking price is, is, again, you can see 3 bucks for that Ward cover, but the Nakayama is asking 6 to $9 uh, plus shipping. So, yes. More the cover, but not a lot more than cover. So there's still a good shot. You can find this at a shop that's not going to bother to, to pull this and price this and just will have this jammed in a dollar box or cheap box somewhere for a discount price. So I like this cover. I would recommend it just for the Quake cover alone. And, and like I said, it's a one shot. So you get the little one shot story as well. Now, uh, I did rock my Superman shirt today. And the reason why I did that is because of the rumors that Henry Cavill will be appearing at San Diego and Hall H when DC takes that stage and maybe they announce something. I hope so. I liked Henry Cavill as Superman. I like him as the Witcher, but I did like his Superman, despite the fact that he was a little too moody. And But, but I blame that on the director. The director and the direction of what they were doing in those movies wasn't what I wanted out of my Superman. But I still think as an actor, and he has the look, and he has the chops to still pull off doing Superman. Hopefully a little bit more of a lighthearted Superman is kind of what I would like. I'm not saying it has to be goofy, but, you know, just something a little more hopeful rather than just sulking and sad all the time. That was just, ugh, not for me. Just not for me. But that said, rumors have it that he's there. He may show up. And they may be announcing something. What that will be, I don't know. But I don't think it's too far of a stretch to think if they do bring him back into the DC cinematic universe that uh, he may, you know, kind of show up where he's already kind of uh, shown up, where he's also kind of already sneak uh, sneak peeked at the end of that first Shazam movie. So maybe we see him in this little Shazam corner because now he's dealing with other characters, you know, as strong as him. So he can really mix it up with either Shazam or and or Black Adam. Yes, this DC Comics Presents 49 is a very popular book. It's a very pricey book. This is the one people kind of focus in on now that we know we're getting Black Adam back because, you know, the first appearance of Black Adam was so long, so long ago, and those early Black Adam appearances are pretty hard to come by. So this is a book that a lot of people have targeted to kind of go pick up if they can. And yes, it is worth, you know, $30 plus, easy, depending on condition. You might be able to sneak a beat-up copy for like $20 or less, but for the most part, this book isn't one you're going to find, but I still wanted to show it in case you can run across it. But I'm not giving you a little pricing info because it's just not worth the effort because uh, chances of you find it for the dollar are going to be slim. And if you do, congratulations. But that said, I still see him possibly Superman mixing it up with these characters. And I think I mentioned this series before, but it's still very cheap and it's still a good way to get these pretty cool Josh Middleton uh, covers and art. Uh, Judge Winnick wrote this, Superman, First Thunder, Shazam. These two go together. I like this little series. And this whole mini is very cheap. It's still cheap, so keep an eye out for it. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to be worth a whole heck of a lot, but if you like Josh Middleton, you like these characters, this is a cheap little mini that you can go scoop out of those dollar bins. Uh, that was issue one, and just so you can see the other covers, there's two, three, and four. It's only four issues. Um, again, Middleton art throughout, so I think it's worth just picking up just for that alone, uh, personally. But you make that call. Uh, this is, like I said, this is very cheap. The whole set runs $7.50. Nine bucks online. There's four issues for seven, seven fifteen to nine dollars. Uh, asking prices again are in that same range. Look, eight bucks for the whole mini, or you can get individual issues, maybe four dollars or less, and that's with free shipping. Four dollars. It's going to cost four dollars to ship this book. Uh, first class, like first class mail, and maybe they do media mail shipping. So you're literally paying a dollar for the book there, even online. So this is the kind of cheap stuff that I'm uh, talking about here. 
who knows? Take a shot. Uh, just check it out again for the pretty cool cover art and the Josh Middleton art inside as well. And yeah, who knows? Because uh, again, we, there's tons of Superman books you can get, but we have no idea in what capacity he may be returning. Will we get another Superman movie? Maybe, but I feel like it just might be more of uh, cameos or appearances in other stuff, uh, more so than a feature film all his own. At least that's my gut instinct, but we'll see. Like maybe another tease uh, that they filmed just for the ta teaser tail end of Black Adam and or uh, Shazam 2. Who knows? Uh, that said, I got one more pick for you. And uh, this is more news that while it, it ties with some Marvel actors, uh, it's not Marvel related. We're talking about Godzilla. Godzilla is going to get a TV series. So they're going to be doing a Godzilla TV series, I think, on Apple TV, which as the one paid subscription service I don't have. But I may have to consider it because uh, I like Kurt Russell. Uh, and if you see and been watching the tax show uh, Action Hero tier list, you see he has made it to the finals. And we'll be uh, talking about more of his stuff next week, along with uh, Sly and uh, Arnold. Uh, who else made it? Denzel made it in our uh, wow cards. Uh, Keanu Reeves and uh, Bruce Willis, I think, are our six that made it to the finals. So we'll see who the... Greatest action hero of all time. Okay, again, I know I didn't go all the way back. No Eastwood, no Harrison Ford because of different reasons. No John Wayne. I get it, but this is my channel. This is what we're doing for fun. We'll see who the action hero is that comes out on top. That said, Godzilla TV series adds Kurt Russell and his son, Wyatt. So who knows who they're going to be playing? I mean, they're just going to be human characters in a Godzilla world. Does it matter all that much? I don't know, but I do like these actors, and it should make this for an interesting series. And there are a lot of Godzilla comics. You can go back to the Marvel ones uh, from way back in the day. But I think I kind of focus in on finding these because you can sometimes come across these in the cheap boxes, the IDW Godzilla books. So keep an eye out for those. Um, there are some RIs, retailer incentives as well, but we're not going to get into that here. This is dollar been digging after all, but Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters. This was 2011. I think this is the first time IDW had the, uh, uh, the license to do these books. And this is Alex Ross cover. Pretty cool animals cross cover. There's variants for this as well. But this one is one that yeah still does yeah, okay, but it's not super pricey. I mean, yes, a copy did sell for 15 bucks uh, with free shipping, but the asking prices on this thing, it's $6 to $10. It's not a whole heck of a lot, and there's a chances that you can get, grab this issue or any of the series, this Kingdom of Monsters series, which is about 12, I think, somewhere around there. It's like 10 or 12 uh, in that first run from 2011 uh, in those cheap boxes. Keep an eye out for those. But then in the next year, IDW kept rolling. And then we got another Godzilla series that followed up in 2012, I believe. And here we got Art Adams, who's done a couple of uh, great Godzilla covers as well. So uh, this is a series I'm spotlighting a little bit extra because uh, some of these covers are just really cool. I mean, just that issue one. Yes, he's very lizard looking like there, but I still like the uh, Art Adams take on Godzilla. Uh, including, look at that, issue two is pretty good. Issue, uh, I think it's five with uh, Mecha Godzilla there. Uh, you run down through the whole the whole run. You can see that they got issue uh, six there in the middle, uh, issue ten, and then it wrapped up in issue thirteen with that final one uh, there over on the uh, your, well, I guess your left, right, the far side of my screen. Uh, but thirteen issues in this run in 2012. And uh, again, and if you find any of these, feel free grab them because they can do all right. Not a super duper expensive. Look, copies can sell for as cheap as three bucks. You can get lots of them for ten dollars for like three or four issues. Uh, asking prices are kind of in that same range. Look, issues one and two together for 13 bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks for individuals. It's kind of all over the place as far as pricing goes. Uh, they're not in heavy, heavy demand right now, but who knows as Godzilla gets more popular uh, for this you know, modern modern audience, I guess you, you could say. I remember Godzilla from when I was a kid, and he was one of my favorites. I mean, that was one of my favorite toys. That Shogun Warrior, uh, Big Godzilla, was definitely one of my all-time favorite toys. So... Uh, I don't know. I always have a special little place in my heart for Godzilla. And uh, with that, I got one more uh, to share with you, Godzilla related. And that's the next series that followed this one. Uh, and this book has gotten very pricey for one reason or another. I mean, it's a cool cover, cool wraparound cover. But if you can come across it in the dollar bin, uh, Rulers of Earth, Godzilla Rulers of Earth uh, has gotten pricey. Uh, this is a pretty cool wraparound cover. And this thing, while the copies that are selling aren't selling for very much, uh, 650, 750. Some people have snuck this one out of the uh, eBay, uh, you know, listings for cheap uh, at auction. For both of those, you notice these are at auction. But those asking prices, if you go looking now, I don't see any cheap copies right now. The only copies I see right now are asking 80, 50, 80, 
Yeah, I think there's even one listed for 150. Uh, but very expensive asks. And look, 80 bucks is for a fine copy as well there in the middle. It's not even a near mint uh, copy. It's a fine copy. So this is one you just want to keep an extra eye out for, even if you just want to find it to flip it, because uh, you may be able to get yourself a nice return, especially if you throw it out there against uh, some of these asking prices. It'd be a low ball, the offering undercut, and you, know, you might be able to flip yours pretty quick. I don't know. But the point being, check out these Godzilla books if you find them in cheap boxes, because uh, they're kind of fun, uh, and you might be able to find something that's worth your time and effort in doing so. That's all I got this week. I tried to keep it a little bit short because last week I went a little bit long with uh, piling up on the news. I think it was like seven. So this time I went over with the five topics, just normally what I try to go for. So hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully you still like this format and you like what I'm offering here. Uh, again, this is episode 202. Uh, granted, I don't have 202 videos, but I do have 202 articles that, uh, <laughs> that tie in with these. So uh, yeah, I've been doing this a while. So thanks again for stopping by. Thanks for still supporting the channel. Uh, thanks for still reading the article over on comicbookinvest.com. And uh, as I said, I'm going to be trying out the membership thing, I think, this weekend. So if you're interested, uh, I'll let you know more as I know more. I'm still kicking around ideas with uh, the fellows of what we can offer. Might be doing some things like maybe monthly hangouts, uh, maybe like pre-show or after-show kind of hangouts uh, after some of the live shows, maybe something like that. If you guys are interested in that kind of thing, I uh, might even be offering some... Uh, actual materials, maybe some uh, exclusive t-shirts, because uh, I do like making the t-shirts, maybe something like that. I don't know. Kicking around ideas. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations of things that you would want uh, from us, from the channel, if you were to do a paid membership for, let me know in the comments. Give me some suggestions, because I'm open to it. Uh, again, this is not to make money. Uh, this is all to go right back into the channel. So whatever we do get, will be put right back in to giving back out to you guys. So, uh, that's what I'm looking to do here. Again, this isn't my job. This is my passion. This is my hobby. This is my love. And, uh, I just love sharing, uh, comics and talking comics, uh, with uh, like-minded people. So, uh, if you still are into that. Uh, keep checking out the channel, keep hanging around, uh, cause we still have more stuff coming your way. And, uh, with that all said, Thanks again for all the support over these last couple of years. Uh, and uh, keep telling your friends so we can keep growing a little bit bigger. And with that, I will see you guys soon with some more content. All right. Later.